everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing a review on a new foundation from Burberry. So this is called their Matte Glow Foundation. So as you can see, the bottle cap is matte. Their old formula, which is this one, this one has like a shiny type of lid. This foundation retails for $52. There are 30 different shades. You get uh, one fluid ounce, 30 mils, and you can buy this on the Nordstrom website, which is where I bought it. You can also buy it on the Burberry website, which their shipping wasn't bad. I also bought it from Burberry, which <laughs> this is my third shade, you guys, and it's been, it's been a frustrating situation. So let me get into the details about it first. So it says it's a new generation of foundation that perfects the complexion with a luminous matte finish that lasts all day. It's an innovative second skin formula that blends seamlessly into the skin, delivering an undetectable high coverage for a result that is flawless yet natural. Enriched with life-proof technology, which whoever knows what that is, this foundation is heat, humidity, and pollution resistant. So it is made in France. I bought the old one, I would say probably in the springtime. And I had heard Samantha Robindahl talk about this one and the Natasha Denona Glow Foundation. Oh, I can't remember what that one is. But she had talked about how she loved, loved, loved this foundation and I'd never really tried anything from Burberry. So I bought this foundation and I'd been testing it all week, kind of playing around with it and getting to know it. I had filmed all of the info on it the check-ins, all of it, right? I'm getting ready to edit the video and I'm creating my links and I can't find it anywhere. It is completely disappeared. It was gone. Like it wasn't on the Burberry website. It wasn't on the Nordstrom's website. I was like, whoa, where did it go? It was really bizarre the way that it happened. So I couldn't review it. And I know that a lot of you guys were excited about it because I had told you prior to me testing it out that I had bought it and I was gonna test it out. But there was no point in uploading the video if you couldn't buy the foundation. So I pushed it to the side and I did like the foundation, by the way. I felt like it was a decent foundation. My opinion was I felt like there was a lot of foundations like this on the market. My thing is when you pay $52, you want it to be a foundation that is a step above some of the others, you know, that are a little bit cheaper. And I felt like this was a beautiful foundation, but I didn't feel like it was different enough to justify the price. So push that to the side and then a couple weeks ago I was on the Nordstrom's website and I saw this pop up. So I first ordered medium warm number 60. The shades are wonky you guys. So bizarre and I know that I've said that plenty of times about other brands but this one baffles me. Fortunately Nordstrom's has been fantastic so I, or I ordered both of these from Nordstrom's. I'm sending them back tomorrow. And I ended up ordering another shade. Nordstrom's didn't have 80 warm, so I had to actually buy this from the Burberry website, which Nordstrom's was very, very kind about it, and I appreciate it. So the first shade that I bought was medium warm number 60. That did not work. And then I bought the shade medium neutral number 70, and that didn't work. Up here on the screen, I'm gonna show you guys swatches of both of these foundations, just so you can see how light they are. This is supposed to be for the medium category and it's very light. Let's just talk about the medium skin range for a second. Up here on the screen, there are images of the foundation and the shades. If you look, 60 Warm kind of looked like it might be the right shade. It was it had a little bit of that warmthness to it, a little bit of depth, and I thought, okay, that will be the perfect shade. Yeah, not so much. It looks absolutely nothing like it does in this swatch, okay? So then I thought, well, maybe I'll get the 70 neutral because maybe taking out all the yellow, but maybe have a darker shade. Yeah, not so much. There was hardly any difference between 60 warm and 70 neutral. And my only other option is the 80 medium warm because if you look right above 80 medium warm, there is 90 deep neutral. It takes this huge jump from the 80s to the 90s and from like the medium to the deep. So, on the medium shade range, I am more on the end, the higher end, the darker end of the medium shade range. So I would say I'm probably, at, I prefer my foundations to be like that medium to tan, okay? These shades that I have here with me, number 60, 70, possibly 80, 80 matched me okay. I can say that, it's very yellow though. I would say 60 and 70 are more for like the lighter end of the medium shade range, not the darker end. The only medium to tan shade range that you have to, to work with 
is the 80 warm and 80 cool. I appreciate them having 30 shades, but these shades run very light. There's a lot of shades, but I don't feel like each shade could accommodate several different skin tones, which is kind of what you want out of a shade range. You want one shade to cover a few different type or a few different skin tones. But this one is just not that way and they run exceptionally light. So if I were you, if you guys decide that you want to buy this foundation, I mean, wait till the end of the video so you hear my full thoughts on it. But if this is something that you think will work for you, do not make the mistake I did and order this online. You really need to go into the Nordstrom store and swatch and try this on and all of that because the shades are just off. If you know your shade, let's just say that you have the other version of this, which by the way, this one is still not available. Now, I don't know if this one, Fresh Glow Foundation, is the same as the Beauty Fresh Glow Luminous Fluid Foundation that is sold on the Nordstrom's website. I'm assuming it is, but I don't know. This one has very limited shades, so I don't know if they've just completely discontinued this and Nordstrom's is selling the ones they have left. I have absolutely no idea. I have no idea. If any of you guys know any information about this foundation, let us know in the comments down below because I could not tell you. I've looked all over the internet trying to kind of find the information on that one and I can't find it. In today's video, what we're going to be doing is I've been testing this all week long. This is actually my fourth day wearing this and today I actually decided to test it next to the older like luminous formula. So the matte versus this formula because I wanted you guys to see in case this is something that you really liked. I wanted you guys to see and know the differences between these two. Let's go ahead and jump straight into the application portion of the video. I'm going to come back and do some check-ins. I'm going to wear this for over 12 hours for the for the last four days and I will give you guys my full final thoughts at the end. So I will see you guys then. I've already primed with my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Base. So this pump on this one is weird, like the bottle. Like I can't really push it. Like it, the twist is different, I don't know. I'm gonna start with one side with a brush, the other side with a sponge and just see what kind of coverage we get. It's a little bit light, but I might be able to wear, make it work like if I bronze up pretty good. Um, sometimes I'd rather go like a shade too dark than a shade too light. And the reason for that is it's easier for me to really blend it into my skin if it's a tiny bit darker. Now you don't want it like too dark, but you also don't want it to be too light because it can make your skin look really ghostly if your foundation is too light. So, I mean, obviously trying to find the perfect shade is the goal, but um, I think I can make this work though. This is a decent shade, especially with winter coming. This is probably going to be a good shade. So I can tell right away that this is a matte formula because it's drying down and setting before it starts to set is it does have a little bit of brush marks. So I'm going to go over it with my sponge just to make sure that it's like really pressed into my skin. My preferred way of applying foundation is to brush it on with a brush because I can control how much I put on. I feel like with the sponge, I can't control how much I put on um, and I get it a little bit too cakey in certain areas and so the brush I feel like gives me an even application but I love pressing the foundation into the skin with a sponge and this looks beautiful like it looks really pretty. kind of dries quickly so I would recommend putting it on in sections and blend it out and really press it into the skin before you move on because it does dry quick. If you like to apply your foundation like you put dots all over your face and then blend it out, I don't recommend with that with this one. This one dries too quickly to do that with. As you can see, I'm getting pretty decent medium coverage. I will say this one definitely has more coverage than the old formula. The old formula, I would say, has like a light medium coverage. 
It's been a minute since I've worn it, but I do remember that I really had to build it up to get the coverage. This one has much better coverage. I kind of feel like if you built this one, it might get cakey. If you want to make this foundation a fuller coverage, you could build it, but I wouldn't recommend building it in the areas where if you have a lot of wrinkles because the more foundation you're going to put in your wrinkles, the more it's going to emphasize. I don't typically like a matte foundation like this and it's set down. It kind of, it's not a powdery finish, but it kind of is. It's almost a powdery. So that's it for the application portion of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and jump off camera, finish the rest of my makeup, and I will see you guys in my midday check-in. Let's get applying both of these foundations. Now, I do think the shade might not be the same. I'm not exactly sure. I guess we'll see what it looks like when I put them on, but I do know that I, when I wear the glow version of this, like the glow luminous version of this foundation, I cannot wear my Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enrich Face Base. It's too much hydration. So I get a lot of hydration from the primer and then a lot of hydration from the foundation itself. So I am not doing that today. I'm just gonna use my Tatcha Silk Canvas. My hair is going to be in my way the whole freaking time. So I'm going to put the matte on this side and the luminous, whatever this one is, the luminous glow on this side. And we're just going to see, you know, the differences between them, how they wear all day. I'm going to go ahead and apply it with a brush. That is my preferred way of applying the matte formula. I've noticed the last couple days that I've worn it. My favorite way is to apply a thin, freaking thin, layer of it all over my face and then kind of smoothing it out with a sponge. I look ridiculous in the monitor with my hair like this, seriously. <laughs> the Fresh Glow Foundation, I wore shade Warm Nude number 34 and I did feel like this one was kind of had like a beige undertone and even though it said it was warm I didn't feel like it was warm. All right so I'm just gonna apply this on this side of the face and I do feel like this even though this one has a beige undertone um, I felt like this one actually matches my skin better than the one from the nude or the one from the matte and it just kind of blends into the skin a little bit easier. The matte one, you really, really have to kind of work it in. This one, because it is kind of like a luminous foundation, it's much easier to apply on the skin. And I do feel like this one kind of melts into my skin a little bit better. This one is a little bit lighter coverage. I feel like that maybe the matte, you get a little bit more coverage. So this is the matte side. This is the luminous, glowy side. And I got fairly decent coverage. I would say it's like a light medium coverage. I don't know that I would call it like a full medium coverage. Okay, I've went ahead and shut off the ring light. So this is the matte side and this is the luminous side. So just so you guys can see what this looks like in more natural lighting. Okay, everyone, I am back for a midday check-in. Oh, I still have my editing glasses on, I'm sorry. Oh. oh, it's been one of those days. I just got my other video edited and done, and it is about five o'clock in the afternoon, so I applied this right around like 9, 30, 10 o'clock. So it's been on for, what, seven, eight hours now? 
Um, obviously, I am going to have some glasses marks, but I'm not going to hold that against the foundation because I've been wearing those glasses for a couple of hours. I think I started editing at like 11-ish. I don't know. Anyways, okay. Let me get into the foundation. Let me look at it. I haven't even looked at my face. Um, the matte side is doing exactly what it does. It starts to kind of pull apart from the skin. It creases pretty bad. The Burberry, uh, the one on the other side is kind of doing the same thing, but in a less cakey, more natural way. So here we have the matte side. And then we have the luminous side, I guess is how we're going to call it. Um, you can see like right around here around my nose, it kind of gathers, it kind of lays thick and heavy, especially through here. Like this is where I really don't like this foundation. Um, now I did not apply any powders today, not even my Charlotte Tilbury, because I wanted to wear these foundations alone with nothing else. And they they do get a little bit oily. So, you know, even the matte side kind of gets a little bit oily and a little bit dewy. Um, but this side definitely, I mean, the luminous definitely allows that to come through, but in a very natural way, I wouldn't say I look greasy though. There's a difference between letting the natural oils come through the foundation and just looking completely greasy. Let's go ahead and turn off the ring light. Okay. So this is without the ring light on. This is just room lighting and this is what we're looking like. So that's it for the check-in comparing these two. I will come back tomorrow and I will be wearing the matte one all day long. I'm going to come back and give you guys a 12-hour check-in and give you guys my full final thoughts at the end of the video. So I will see you guys then. I have been talking to myself for the last 10 minutes telling you guys all about this foundation and the, cam and the camera wasn't on. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys, I've got to go to bed. Ugh. Okay, I am seriously losing my flipping marbles today. Okay, so I had to wait till 11 o'clock because I actually put on this foundation right around 11 o'clock this morning. I was a little bit later because I had to do some morning chores. So it is 11.13 at night, so I've officially had this on for 12 hours. So I also have my robe on because I'm freezing to death, by the way, and I've been editing. So I do have, I wear these big editing glasses. The They're like blue light glasses. If you guys are on the computer a lot, I cannot recommend the blue lights glasses enough. Like it's just helped in so many different areas. Okay. Anyway, so I do have the glasses marks. So just kind of ignore that because the nose is kind of a hot mess because of the glasses. Let me get into my thoughts about this foundation. And I'm also testing out a new mascara that isn't quite working out very good. So when, when I scoot you in, don't judge. It's the mascara's fault. So here we are up close and personal. And as you can see, I've lost pretty much all of my coverage right around here. Uh, which that's happened the entire time I've worn it. I always, it gets kind of thick and cakey in this area, but that's where I lose the coverage the most. And um, you can see it's kind of starting to break away right here in between my brows. Um, it's completely broke apart right here, but a lot of that could be because of the glasses. The one thing that I will say is I do not like my concealer over this foundation. Not even a little bit. I've tried it with three different concealers and nothing looks good over it. You guys know I like to bring my concealers down even though I don't apply a lot of the concealer like I wipe off the wand but I like to bring it down because I like concealer over this part of my cheek but with this foundation like the concealer doesn't look good over top of it. You can see I have lost quite a bit of my coverage right around here on my forehead. It starts to kind of build up in certain areas. You can see it kind of pulling apart from here. And this is where I'm gonna lose my foundation. If my foundation is gonna disappear, it's gonna be right here in this area. It's just 
like this part of my face like eats foundation I swear this one for me has not been a long-lasting foundation anyway so then when you add other factors to it like wearing glasses or you know scratching your nose or whatever when you put all those together it kind of just becomes a cluster mess on the face you know okay so this is you know no ring light just natural room light and then I have the two umbrella lights sitting in the corners and this is what we're looking like As you notice, I did get rid of the shelf. The shelf was driving me crazy. I couldn't take it anymore. Every video I was watching, I hated that shelf. It was distracting, it was big, and it was bulky, and I'm just finding my way through this whole background thing, and I had to dump it. I couldn't take it. So I went down to uh, Hobby Lobby and bought me a plant, and it's very cute, by the way. So I feel like this is just much more peaceful if you will. First things first, let me get into the differences between these two. This one is a good medium coverage, like full, you know, like a good medium coverage. This one's like a light medium coverage. I feel like this one wears off more natural than this one does. This one's definitely got a luminous finish. This one just definitely has a matte finish. Those are the differences. Longevity wise, I feel like you're probably going to get a good eight hours out of it. After eight hours, it just kind of goes downhill after that, which is the one reason why I went ahead and did my check-in. The last check-in that you guys saw me, I didn't wait till 12 hours because at eight hours, it starts to kind of look, if it looks that bad at eight hours, you guys know what it's going to look like at 12 hours. You know what I mean? Like these foundations, I just have not felt like they have good longevity. This matte foundation is not my favorite. I have a lot of matte foundations that I like. And you guys know that I don't I don't typically pull for a matte foundation. I like more of a natural, little bit of a luminous, a little bit of a dewy, but I don't like it slipping and sliding all over my face. There are some matte foundations that I like. This is not one of them. I really like the Urban Decay Naked. I wish that one had more coverage. I think that would be beautiful. But I guess that's kind of the concept behind the Naked is just kind of like even out your skin tone but still see your skin through it, so I get the concept behind it. I do really like that matte formula. It's soft, but it's not thick and cakey. This one, if you're not careful, this will get too cakey. I mean, I cannot advise you enough to go in so light-handed with this because this one will like cling to like parts of your creases. It will cling to the crevices of your nose. This is a clinger, and when you have a clinger, it means that if you get too heavy with it, it'll cling even more. And it's just not my favorite formula. And I think for me, the price, I expect more out of a foundation that's $52 than I do a $10 foundation. And I feel like there's a lot of fantastic foundations on the market that are better than this one. I feel like it's a decent foundation, like on a scale from one to five, I would say maybe a 2.7 to three. Okay, it's like in the middle. It's not horrible, but it's not the best. But there's so many fantastic foundations out there that I feel like work better, look better, last longer. And the only thing that this one has going for it is the coverage. I really love, here's the thing. I love the way this foundation looks the first four hours. If it lasted for another like six hours, the way that it looks at that one to four hour mark, it's gorgeous. Like when you first apply it, you're like, oh my gosh, like it erases just everything. And it's just so smooth and so beautiful on the skin. But after like the four to six hour mark and then eight hour, it just tanks. Like it just goes downhill quickly. I would say if you were looking for a decent soft matte formula that had good coverage and lasted a long time, I recommend the Givenchy Tint Couture Everywhere Foundation. This is my favorite when it comes to that matte formula where it's not too matte, but it gives me that powdery matte finish. Um, I really love this one. This one right here, this um, the Skin Refreshing, whatever it's called, the Synchro Skin uh, Self-Refreshing Foundation from Shiseido. This one is hands down 4,000 times better than this one. So if you're in the market for like a high-end, newer matte foundation, now this isn't like a matte, I would say this is like a soft matte, 
but if you're in the market for that type of foundation I would get a sample of this one and try this one before I even bothered with this one I'm gonna be honest because this one has a better shade range this one does run a little bit light I've noticed that so pretty on the skin just so pretty. So I hope that this video was helpful for you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for all the love that you show me and my channel. It means the world to me. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend filled with love and joy. I will see you guys in my next video and I love you all so much. Bye. I cannot believe I filmed for like 10 minutes and didn't even know the camera wasn't on. Oh my lord. I need a hot tamale. Oh, I need a hot tamale. I ate a whole pound, of, or almost two pounds, and I ate it in like a week. <laughs> what can I say? I love hot tamales. <laughs>